Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the previous videos in this unit, we've introduced algorithms that can allow us to find single eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Here, we're going to introduce the QR algorithm that allows us to find many eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix at once. The QR algorithm for computing eigenvalues is one of the best known algorithms in numerical analysis, and it was developed in the late 1950s independently by John Francis in England and Vera Kublanovskaya in the USSR. And so far in this unit, we have focused on algorithms for computing a single eigenvalue or eigenvector, but the QR algorithm allows us to efficiently compute good approximations to all of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. And we're going to restrict to the case of real symmetric matrices for simplicity. And let's begin by looking at what happens when we apply the power method to a set of vectors. And that will motivate how we can build the QR algorithm. Let A be a real symmetric n by n matrix. And let's choose x1 to xp to be p linearly independent random starting vectors for our power method. And we'll use a superscript to indicate the iteration in the power method. So the starting vectors will have a superscript to zero. And we can assemble these starting vectors into the columns of a matrix x0 that will be n by p. If we apply the power method, then we'll end up with a simple algorithm. For k equal 1, 2, and so on, we'll have that xk is equal to a times xk minus 1. Let's now follow the same analysis that we did for the original power method. And here we'll order the eigenvalues in terms of magnitude, so lambda 1 has the smallest magnitude and lambda n has the largest magnitude. And let's now look at the ith vector after the kth iteration. So we're looking at xi k. In the eigenvector basis expansion, we can write this down as lambda n to the power of k, alpha i n v n, plus lambda n minus 1 to the power of k, alpha i n minus 1 v n minus 1 and so on to lambda 1 to the k alpha i 1 v 1. So let's now pull out a common factor from this expression and we will pull out the pth largest eigenvalue lambda n minus p. So we'll get a common factor here of lambda n minus p to the k and we'll arrange the remaining terms into two sums. So the first sum, shown in blue here, is for the pth largest eigenvectors. So we'll have a sum here from j equal n minus p plus 1 to n of lambda j divided by lambda n minus p to the k times alpha ij vj and then we'll have the remaining terms shown in green here. So we'll have the sum from j equal 1 to n minus p of lambda j divided by lambda n minus p to the k times alpha ij vj. And if we have then that lambda n minus p plus 1 is greater in magnitude than lambda n minus p, then the sum in green will decay compared to the sum in blue as k tends to infinity. And therefore we know that the columns of xk are going to converge to a basis for the span of the pth largest eigenvectors. Unfortunately, this method doesn't provide a very good basis for that span of eigenvectors because we know, following our original analysis of the power method, that each column of xk will actually be very close to the 
eigenvector with largest magnitude, Vn. So therefore, the columns of xk will become very close to being linearly dependent. But we can resolve this issue by enforcing linear independence at each step. We'll now modify our power method to orthogonalize the vectors after each iteration via a reduced QR factorization. And this will give us an algorithm referred to as the simultaneous iteration. So here then, we'll choose an n by p matrix Q0 with orthonormal columns. And since we're dealing with a potentially reduced QR factorization, we'll use a hat on the Q factors. So in the algorithm, for k equal 1, 2, and so on, we compute xk, which is equal to a applied to q hat k minus 1. And we'll then compute the reduced QR factorization of xk. So we'll write that q hat k r hat k is equal to xk. And we'll then continue with that new q hat k factor. And the column spaces of q hat k and xk are the same. And therefore, we know that the columns of q hat k will converge to an orthonormal basis for the span of the pth largest eigenvectors. In fact, we don't just get a basis for the span of those largest eigenvectors. We get the eigenvectors themselves. And there's a theorem that says that the columns of q hat k converge to the p-dominant eigenvectors of A. And we're not going to look at the full proof here, but we will note that it's not that surprising, because we know that the eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix are orthogonal, and we know that the columns of q hat k converge to an orthogonal basis for the span of the pth largest eigenvectors. We'll also note that the simultaneous iteration approximates the eigenvectors, but we can obtain the eigenvalues via a Rayleigh quotient expression. So we can generalize our scalar Rayleigh quotient expression, and we can compute here q hat transpose a q hat, and that will approximate a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. With p equal n, the simultaneous iteration will approximate all of the eigenpairs of A. And we'll now look at a way to reorganize the simultaneous iteration. And this will provide us with insight about how it works, and it will result in an algorithm that is simpler to implement. We'll now look at deriving the QR algorithm, and the starting point for this is the simultaneous iteration for the case when p is equal to n, and we're approximating all of the eigenpairs of our matrix. And if we write out the simultaneous iteration for this case, then we'll choose an orthogonal n by n matrix Q0, and then for k equal 1, 2, and so on, we'll compute xk is equal to a times qk minus 1, and we'll then perform the QR decomposition on xk, so that qk times rk is equal to xk, and we'll then repeat the process. And I'll note that we drop the hats on the qk and rk matrices in this algorithm, since they're all square matrices in this case when p is equal to n. From this algorithm, we're going to look at how we can reorganize it into a more convenient form. And in order to do this, we're going to require some extra notation. And we're going to underline the qk and rk matrices that appear in the simultaneous iteration. So in the yellow boxes here, I've highlighted the four instances of qk and rk. And from now on, we're going to define these as equal to q underline k and r underline k. Our new algorithm is going to introduce different non-underlined QK and RK matrices. And we're going to look at how these new definitions are connected to those that appear in the simultaneous iteration. So to proceed, let's now write out the first few steps of the simultaneous iteration. 
So we begin by defining Q underline zero is equal to an orthogonal n by n matrix, and we can choose that to be equal to the identity matrix. In the first step, when k equals one, we'll compute x1 is equal to a times q underline zero, and we'll then perform the qr decomposition on x1, so that q underline one, r underline one is equal to x1. In the second step, when k is equal to two, we'll compute x2 is equal to a q underline one, and then q underline two, r underline two is equal to x2. And we'll then proceed with k equal three, four, and so on. We'll now introduce some new definitions, and we'll define the kth Rayleigh quotient matrix, AK is equal to Q underline K transpose A Q underline K. And if the columns of Q underline K approximate the eigenvectors of A, then the diagonal entries of this matrix AK will approximate the eigenvalues of our matrix A. From our AK, we can define new QR factors, QK and RK, so that QK times RK is equal to AK minus one. And we'll look at how we can connect these new definitions to Q underline K and R underline K. And in addition, we're going to show that AK is given by RK times QK. So in other words, we can flip the order of the Q and R factors to get the next AK in the sequence. And this is not obvious from these definitions, but we're now going to look in detail how we can show this is true. So I'm now going to move these new definitions up to this yellow box in the top right, and we'll now look at the steps of the simultaneous iteration and look at how our new definitions will connect. So let's first look at k equal one. And in this case, in our first step, we have that x1 is just equal to a, since q underline zero is equal to the identity. And we'll then have that q underline one, r underline one is equal to a. And if we look now at our first really quotient matrix, a1, then that will be q underline one transpose a q underline one. And substituting in for a, we have that this is equal to Q underline one transpose Q underline one, R underline one, Q underline one. And canceling away two factors of Q, this is just equal to R underline one, Q underline one. In addition, from our definition of the new Q and R factors, we have that Q one R one is equal to A zero. And that is defined as Q underline zero transpose a Q underline zero. And since Q underline zero is the identity, that is just equal to a. So we now have two different expressions for a in terms of the non underlined and underlined Q and R matrices. And since the QR decomposition is unique, we can conclude that Q underline one is equal to Q one and R underline one is equal to R one in this case. And since we also know that A one is equal to R underline one, Q underline one, we can conclude that A one is just equal to R one Q one. And so that verifies the first step of the correspondence that we can compute our A one in terms of flipping the factors of Q1 and R1. So in this step, we see that the non-underlined and underlined versions of Q and R are actually the same. However, once we move on to the second step, we'll see this pattern is no longer true. So let's now look at the case when K is equal to two. And in this second step, we have then the X2 is equal to A times Q underline one and Q underline two, R underline two is equal to X two. 
And if we now look at x2, then that is equal to a times q underline 1. And we can now write that out as q underline 1, q underline 1 transpose a q underline 1. And that now gives us an expression where we can replace three terms by a1. So we have this equal to q underline 1, a1. And using our QR factorization of a1, we can write this out to be q underline 1, q2, r2. And if we now compare our two expressions for x2, we see that this implies then that q underline 2 is equal to q underline 1, q2. And given our previous result, we know that that's just equal to q1, q2. And we also see that r underline 2 is equal to r2. If we now look at our definition of a2, that would be q underline 2 transpose a q underline 2. And we can now substitute in our expression for q underline 2. That will be q2 transpose q underline 1 transpose a q underline 1 q2. And we can recognize that the central three terms in this expression are just equal to a1. So this will become then q2 transpose a1 q2. And we can now substitute in our expression for a1. So we'll have then q2 transpose q2 r2 q2. And that will simplify to r2 q2. And again, we see then that our identity that we're looking to prove holds. We see that we can get a2 by flipping the factors of q and r. The same pattern continues for k equal 3, 4, and so on. And we can factorize our matrix ak to get the qk and rk, and we can then compute the next factor ak plus 1 by computing rk times qk. And the columns of the matrix Q underline K, which is given by multiplying all of the Q1 to QK, will approximate the eigenvectors of A. And the diagonal entries of our Rayleigh quotient matrix, AK, will approximate the eigenvalues of A. And since the eigenvectors are orthogonal for our symmetric matrix A, the AK will converge to a diagonal matrix as a K tends to infinity. So this now lets us state the QR algorithm. And the remarkable thing about the new definitions is that we no longer require the original underlined matrices QK and RK, and we can do everything in terms of these new qk and rk factors. So we can define then a0 to be equal to our matrix A, and then for k equal 1, 2, and so on, we can compute the qr decomposition of ak minus 1, so qk rk is equal to ak minus 1, and we can then flip the order of the factors and compute the next ak as just equal to rk times qk. And that is all there is to it. So we're just continually computing QR decompositions and flipping the order of the matrices. And this will then give us everything that we need to know to recover the complete spectrum of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's now look at a Python program that demonstrates the QR algorithm. The program QR example demonstrates the QR algorithm, and we're going to make use of a test 4x4 symmetric matrix A, shown in the bottom left corner here. And in the code, we'll first define our matrix A, and we'll then initialize AK as just equal to A. We'll then create a matrix Q prod that's equal to a 4x4 identity matrix, and we'll use this for keeping track of the products of the QK in the QR algorithm that will give us the eigenvectors of our matrix. We'll then perform the QR algorithm, 
And in the first step, we'll compute the QR decomposition of AK. And we'll then compute the next AK in the sequence by performing the multiplication of the switched order RK times QK. And we'll then update Q prod by multiplying it by the new QK matrix. We'll then print out the eigenvalues given by the diagonal entries of the AK matrix. And we'll print out the eigenvectors given by our Q prod matrix. And we'll then perform a reference computation using the NumPy eig routine for comparison. And in this version of the algorithm, we're just going to perform a fixed number of max iters iterations, where max iters is defined as 100. And this is definitely more than is required in this case. And if we wanted to design a more efficient algorithm, then we would have to introduce a convergence criterion when we could stop uh, the iterations. So let me now go ahead and run this program. And we see that the eigenvalues of this matrix actually work out to be approximately 4, 3, 2, and 1. And we compute the eigenvectors as well. And if we compare to the NumPy reference computation, then we see that all of the digits of precision that are printed here, we have perfect correspondence. However, we will note that the NumPy routine returns the eigenvalues in a different order than the QR algorithm. And this is to be expected since they're using different algorithms, so they may end up finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues in a different order. We can also see that in some cases, NumPy returns eigenvectors with a flipped sign. And again, this is totally reasonable for different algorithms and both signs are perfectly valid. So it's worth noting that the matrix Q prod is only required if we require the eigenvectors themselves. If all we require are the eigenvalues, then we could remove the computation of Q prod, and that would just give us a two line loop for the QR algorithm. Here we presented the simplest version of the QR algorithm, which we refer to as the unshifted QR algorithm. And if we wanted to obtain an industrial strength algorithm that could work for a wide variety of input cases, then there are a number of other issues that we might have to consider. Firstly, convergence can be accelerated significantly by introducing shifts in the same way that we did for the inverse iteration and the Rayleigh iteration. In addition, it's more efficient to reduce our input matrix A to tridiagonal form via household reflectors before applying the QR algorithm. We'd also have to think about reliable convergence criteria for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And high quality implementations of the QR algorithm exist in libraries such as LAPAC and in Python and MATLAB's eig routine. And these are designed to handle all of these subtleties for us.